Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. It's been a while. So let's have a bit of a catch up, shall we? My most recent projects have been the little mini pond project. So we'll have a look down there and see how they're getting on. But then I've got a bit of a surprise. Well, a surprise to me anyway. Um, I got a little bit of a shock earlier. So stick around and we'll talk about that in a minute. But let's go and have a look at these ponds. So we've got this pond out here that you've seen me set up. And that one down there. So this one's actually working quite well. The sun comes from that direction down here. So this kind of twisted willow thing provides quite a bit of shade for it. Which is probably the only reason it's not gone completely green. As you can see, the plants are looking pretty good. There's a little goldfish in there. Little redhead, where's it gone? So the water's not gone completely green or anything like that. So that one is actually thriving quite well. This one, not so well. If you look at these, the kind of horsetail things, I don't know how well that'll come up on the camera, but they're just looking a bit limp and lifeless compared to these ones, which I put in two or three weeks ago, something like that. They're looking much greener, much stronger, much taller, much stiffer. They're doing really well. So it's not really working. The solar pump you saw me set up for the other pond here, I've moved to here, but it's absolutely rubbish. Unless it's blistering sun, it just doesn't work. I mean, it does work, it makes such a racket. So, giving up on this one, I'm going to move all of these out of here and put them into there. There's a lesser spotted rubbish cat. So, drained that move them all over here. You can see here the difference between the ones that have had a couple of weeks in here, which are these nice strong green ones, and these kind of pathetic looking ones. So I'll keep them there for a bit. That's one of those USB air pumps that's running that. Um, I gave up with the solar powered one, which is this one. I shall put a link in the description so you can avoid buying this piece of crap for yourself because it makes an absolute racket and doesn't work very well. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. So that's just going to become, what, a flower pot? Yes. Flower pot for all these. Mm -hmm. So, quick stop by the discus tank. You can see that's still a bit dirty, it's a bit neglected. I've only really been doing water changes on it and nothing else, so there's quite a bit of hair alligator and stuff. I've just done a big water change now and stripped away what I can and did a bit of plant trimming and that kind of stuff. But hopefully my Felix Smart, if you've heard about that, will be coming in the next couple of months and that will be due for a complete new aquascape. Um, so that's to come with there. Let's move on to what I really wanted to talk about. Before I do that, the number one question I get about this pond is, don't the raccoons get in? Simple answer is no, because I live in Sheffield in the UK and we don't have raccoons. But this is my office, this is where I sit and I work, my normal stuff. CCTV captures the pond, it's got it in there, that's it here and here. The only thing that's paid any interest at all has been cats. The local cats come up, they have a little drink, but there's far too many hiding spaces for the little goldfish, so nothing ever happens, or so far, fingers crossed. What I really wanted to talk about is this tank. So this is my little cherry shrimp tank in my office. Well, cherry shrimp slash killifish. It's overrun with these Amazon frog bits. But you can see there's the female here and here's the male here. And other than being completely overgrown, this tank's doing pretty well. There's loads of shrimp in there, there's loads of snails in here. The killifish seem happy enough. I just need to spend a bit more time thinning this out. Um, but look at this beautiful fish, absolutely stunning. Um, but what I want to show you is, I moved these up here well, a couple of months back probably. You saw me, I won them at an auction um, and I had them downstairs in a quarantine tank and I was just cleaning out that quarantine tank and I found this. This is the quarantine tank. And look what we've got in there. Some little baby killifish, which have been living off the mulm 
in the bottom of it, basically this tank here, I'd let the water drop down to about here because there was nothing in it. And I just happened to start cleaning things out again. Hello, what's that there? So I think there are three of them. But the most surprising thing is the killifish were only in here for a week. Look at that. So there you go, Mulm is good. It can save you from situations where you don't actually think you've got fish in the tank and it turns out you do. But that's pretty cool. I'm now an official killifish beater and I didn't even know it. Where have they gone? I'm just in this big ball of java moss. Which brings me to, if anyone has ordered off my website recently, apologies, it wasn't working properly, I didn't know, and I wasn't getting any notifications, so hopefully I'm all caught up again. But, lots of java moss for sale, lots of snails, lots of shrimp, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of shrimp. This shrimp colony is doing really well. Um, Kind of running low on plants, but this is my rainbow tank with a few escape guppies in here. But everything in here has just been kind of chugging along. Um, got my snail farm, as you've seen. We've got what is now a killifish breeding tank or raising tank. Um, got the super red bristle noses in there somewhere, and some snails, some guppies. Nothing, nothing. Saltwater tank, which is going horrible. Um, look at all that red, horrible. Yeah. Cyanobacteria, bubble algae, or whatever you want to call it. It's just been so neglected. I need to get rid of this tank, really. More guppies and shrimp, and over here, I'm turning this into what's slowly becoming my favourite tank. Um, it's kind of a bristle nose or pleco breeding cave. And we like to play a fun little game, all the plecos and I, where I stack all these up nice and neatly in the corner, and they come along in the evening and destroy them all. Um, but we've got a few sitting on eggs in various caves, which you can't really see, I think that one there has some. One of these guys has either eggs or babies prying now in there. But this tank's doing great. Um, best time to come in here and see this. I mean, it looks really bare at the moment, but I'm going to start making some more caves and getting some more wood and making it look a bit prettier. But if I come in here of an evening when the lights are off, and still have the lights from the other tanks behind me, I can watch them for ages. They're great. They really are good, these little fish. Everyone thinks they're boring because they hide all the time, but I think they do really well. Just a quick update while I get back into the swing of things. Apologies if we've been waiting for a video and it's not been one there. This life gets in the way sometimes, as I said before. But some empty tanks, so keep watching. Make sure you click that subscribe button and see what I'm planning on putting in these in the future. Suggestions always welcome, but thank you for sticking with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Most recently you've seen the little mini pond project, so let's go and have a look at them first, and then... Yeah? So we'll take a look at them, and then I'll show you a bit of a... Oh, for fuck's sake. Kind of mixed tank. We'll come on to that in a bit later, and then over here... Is a huge mess. Puffer tank which she shares with a uh, bad, 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 bad.